Hello and welcome to Ms. Ma's Advanced Functions class. This is the 5.1 Supplemental Video Drawing Reciprocals Worksheet. So I've actually pre-recorded this video and I will be time-lapsing some of the questions, um, but I will do some commentary as well on the earlier ones. So use the table contents and figure out which question you want to watch. Uh, so you can see here, wherever I have zeros, I am just putting in my vertical asymptotes, and then I want to label them right away. Also, I'm going to label my horizontal asymptote. You know that if you have a regular polynomial or absolute value or something like that, then you're always going to have y equals zero as your horizontal asymptote. And we're going to see some weird ones later, but that's it for now. And we're also going to put our points of intersection in. We have a maximum at six, so we're putting in our minimum at one over six. We have a y-intercept at negative 6, so we put a new y-intercept at negative 1 over 6. You'll notice I'm not actually labeling the coordinates for the points of intersection. That's because it actually is pretty difficult to find the points of intersection for specific graphs, so we're not requiring you to actually find those coordinates, okay? Um, we might ask you to do it algebraically for something with absolute value or maybe a parabola or something like that, but um, for most of the graphs that we're going to do, it's actually really difficult to just add and subtract one from a graph. So um, don't worry about that too much. And you can see I'm just connecting the dots in a curvy and attractive manner, and uh, that's, that's all I really need to do. Um, and I just write my domain in. My domain is x not equal to 2 and 6 because those are my vertical asymptotes. And the range, you have to be a little bit careful. You can see it's in two sections, um, y n less than 0 and y greater than equal to 1 over 6 because there's a little section in there that I can't touch. So you got to watch out for that. Uh, so let's move on to number 2. Uh, you can see that I've got my vertical asymptotes in here and uh, I've got my points of intersection going. I should have labeled my horizontal asymptote, so I get a minus half for that on this question. Get your maximum in there, because that was originally a minimum, and then connect the dots in a curvy and attractive manner. You know, it's supposed to be symmetrical, but you can see that my graph isn't quite symmetrical. That's okay, we just do our best. We're not graphing machines, we're just humans, so don't worry about it too much. You don't have to make it absolutely perfect. It is just a sketch. Okay, so Again, our domain is limited by our vertical asymptotes, and our range, we have to watch out a little bit. There is a little section that we can't touch. Okay, so moving on, question three and four. So question three actually is an exponential function, so you do have to keep that in mind, but we're going to attack it in the same way. We have our vertical asymptote where there's a zero, and because there was a horizontal asymptote at y equals negative four, I'm actually going to draw in a new horizontal asymptote at one over that, so negative 1 over 4, and because I'm going off into infinity in the positive values, uh, positive x values, I know that I'm going to be uh, approaching y equals 0 in infinity on the positive x values. So again, just getting those points of intersection in. Be careful that you don't cross over the x-axis. You can see I was just showing you not to do it. Um, and we should leave that little blank open, okay? So don't cross the x-axis unless you know you have to. If there's a vertical asymptote in the original, then you would switch and have uh, zero in, in the new graph. But otherwise, do not cross the x-axis. It is the forbidden, the forbidden zone, all right? And again, just being really careful about finding that range. So you can see with number four, I'm just estimating where the zeros are and drawing my vertical asymptotes in. And you can just estimate that number. It's not really quite clear there, that's okay. And just double check and make sure you're writing all your negatives where you need negatives and things like that. Uh, we should have labeled y equals zero again, so we have lost another half mark here. And doing our points of intersection, our maximum becomes a minimum. Oh, and I just saved myself, so double check that you have labeled everything and all those things, those good things. It's a really silly reason to lose marks just because you forgot to label something. So just be a little bit careful about that. And we're just trying to do our best to make a nice curve there. Okay? So we just do our domain. Again, just limited by those vertical asymptotes. And uh, the range, we're going to make sure it's y less than zero, so anything is possible in the negative, but greater than equal to one over four. Okay, watch out for that equals. Sometimes you have it and sometimes you don't. Okay, 
So number five is confusing for a lot of people because there is a double zero at x equals two. Uh, but just, again, use those same principles. We draw our asymptotes in. We're drawing our points of intersection. You just follow along. And you can see, actually, that the original is not symmetrical. So we don't expect the new one to be symmetrical either. And I'm just estimating those points again. So, and then just trying to draw the curve in a curvy and attractive manner, connecting the dots, you know. And so where it's negative, it's going to stay negative. So it doesn't have to switch up to the top. Just follow what your points are. If you have a point and you drew it in, then it should stay in, OK? You have to go through that point. And don't try to go through the axis in order to make it look like what you think it should look like. Just trust your points, trust yourself, and do, do follow what the asymptotes are and the points are, OK? So this next one I found actually really confusing to draw myself. Um, and so I really had to just trust uh, trust what I was doing. You can see there's an original vertical asymptote there, and I'm going to make it a zero in the new graph. Um, and then I'm just doing my points of intersection as well and drawing a new horizontal asymptote. I actually wrote y equals zero, but it doesn't end up being one of the asymptotes uh, for this graph, which is fine. So you can erase that if you do that. Um, in, in a test or something like that. It's always safe to draw it in and then double check and see, okay, do I need all this stuff? Um, and then I estimate the points and flip it over. So I estimated the y-intercept at 9 over 2 and I gave the new y-intercept as 2 over 9 and that really helped me to finish this graph off and make it look really good. You can see the original is probably an ax plus b over cx plus d. So, so is the reciprocal graph. Okay, so 7, 8, and 9 are pretty straightforward. I'm not going to comment any more. I'm just going to let you enjoy the video. So thanks for watching. Bring any questions you have to class, and I will see you soon. Bye.